Hi, I'm James. And I'm Dan. And today we're doing our three-part series on servicing the 1998 GQ TD42. So again, just check the drain plug. the engine oil, oil filter, fuel filter, air filter, and we're going to change the coolant. Alright, so we're under the front of the GQ, we're going to drop the engine oil, let that drain, uh, have ourselves a lemon squash while we wait, and uh, then we'll uh, look at doing the filters. Try not to wear too much of this. Beautiful. Black gold. Cool. That's that done. So we're going to change the air filter. This is a custom air box, so it'll have no relevance to your stock controls. <laughs> so um, I change my air filter uh, like maybe once every 10,000, maybe. So it doesn't really change, it change that often because it's got a small cooler, it's probably never really gets dirty. I used to have to change it every 5,000 before I got a catch can because it would just turn black. But now it doesn't do that anymore, so don't need to change it as often. So while James is changing the air filter, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull off the fuel filter housing. I find the easiest way to do these filters is to actually just undo a couple of hose clamps, pull the fuel lines off, unbolt the housing, <coughs> chuck it in your vise on the bench and undo the, ha and undo the filter over there. It's not particularly hard to undo the filter there, but the bracket isn't very strong. I actually have re-welded this one and replated it because it was cracked when James bought the car. Also, while you've got the fuel filter housing off, it's much easier to get at the oil filters because otherwise the intercooler's in the way. So if, uh, if you have that issue with your car, yeah, I find that's the easiest way to get around it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull off the uh, delivery lines here, disconnect them, and then take off the fuel filter housing. Best advice is you probably throw a rag all around that before you take the lines off. You will lose a bit of fuel. All right, it's the lines disconnected. Make sure you take note of which way those lines go on. They are pretty foolproof um, in where they sit, but yeah, you wanna make sure you get your delivery from the tank and outlet to the motor the right way around. And just uh, crack these bolts. Try and hold that level as you bring it up, you won't lose any fuel. Lamb, you want to jump in and undo that uh, connector for me? So that is the um, water in fuel sender for the float switch in the bottom of the pump. Yep. Cool. Take this over to the bench, drain it out, and we'll change the filter. Aha, uh -huh. there we go. Stick that up out of the way. Right, let's see how dirty it was and if it was actually worth replacing it. Oh! Oh! Oh, God! What's happened there? It's had some water go through it. Hey? I actually know what that is. So, my tire on the roof fills with water in the mornings. Now I drive away, it all splashes around off the side and it must have... Could have sucked it up from that. Look at that. What, is, what, sort, of, what sort of insect is that? If you're a biologist, let us know what type of biology that is. <laughs> Some rare endangered species okay. inhaled by a patrol. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get the vacuum cleaner. Right, While you clean that, I'm gonna go check on Dan. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is pull out the uh, water and fuel sender out of the bottom of the filter here. And um, then I'm gonna go ahead, put the housing in the vise, and unscrew the filter from the housing. This should be fairly easy to take out, should being the keyword. So that, um, if you guys don't know or want to know, that is the water in fuel sender, it's just a float. So sitting in diesel, that'll stay down like that. If you get any water in your fuel, it'll come through to the bottom of the housing because the water always goes and sits under the oil. Um, and that'll bring the float up, which activates this little sender and it'll bring out a light on your dash. Or if you've got a modern car, um, it'll probably bring up an engine fault code or put the car into limp mode. Now we'll go ahead and change the filter, pull that off the housing. Alright, so I've got the filter housing in the vise on the bench here. Try 
try to grab it by, I try to grab it by one of the flanges where the mount bolts normally bolt up to. And yeah, then just grab your filter pliers like you normally would and nip that up a bit. Tight. That is um, tight. Now you see what I mean about why you wouldn't be able to get that done on the factory mount. It would have twisted by now. <laughs> okay, so whoever put this filter on here last time did it up pretty tight. I don't know who that was, but um, we've moved up to a bigger vise to try and get it undone. Is she going? No. She's crushing. Oh, Need like the rubber. I got an idea that just might work. Okay, here's how this is gonna roll. James, yes. come around here. Come on here. Yes. Ah, we've got the double grip up. All right, we're going that way, yeah? Nah, towards me. Towards me? All right, so we're going down. down. Oh, I saw it move. It's, it's squeezing it. Oh, yeah. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fuck, she's slipping. <sighs> oh, yeah. fuck me. Woo. Strip the paint off the fucking thing. <laughs> That's a workout. <laughs> <laughs> Whoop. These are all James. That's fine. Okay, so you can see why preemptively we took it out of the car to undo it. Yeah. <laughs> I expected it to be tight, but not that tight. <laughs> oh. Oh. How does that always happen? Always you drained it. <laughs> I did drain it. I held it upside down. It must have vacuum. Maybe that's what it was so hard to undo. Turn it upside down. What do you mean upside down? Okay, let's go to the front of the air filter. It all drained okay, out on James' like, floor. Like, um, while Dan's clowning around with the uh, fuel filter, I'm going to be uh, reinstalling the air filter. As you can see, this one is very, very knackered. It's got a bunch of bugs and shit in it and dirt and crap. So we're going to put this brand spanker in. Quite simple, you just dock it in. Just like that, and get your cover, and you stick it back on, and that's it. And then you do it all back up. <laughs> so simple, even I can do it. Uh, the, so I saw this video on YouTube of this um, old bloke talking about how he reckons that um, bonnet scoops should be faced backwards because at the moment they don't allow air to flow through the intercooler like efficiently. So he was pretty much saying that if you would face it backwards, because you have a low um, pressure system of air flowing over the engine and up the windscreen, because of that low air pressure system, air would get sucked out of the engine bay back through the bonnet scoop and then cause a higher induction of air in through the radiator and up through but the engine. Wouldn't you be blowing hot air from the radiator right. through the engine? That's what I thought this, as well. This, this is an argument as yeah. old as the hills. Um, the same argument goes for like the reverse induction cows that you see on like 70s, 80s. And that's that's cars. what he was pretty much saying. Um, yeah. Some people swear by them and some people say they're useless. It's, um, it's, it's one of them endless debates. There's the two sides to it. Same, you're forcing air in with a front facing uh, scoop. You're going to force air when you're at speed down through the engine bay. In the same way that with a rear facing scoop, you're going to draw air, you've got two sides to that, you're going to draw air up through the engine bay or if you get a large enough negative pressure behind it, you are going to force air in through it because it creates a vacuum. Um, they don't work, as, in my opinion, they don't work that efficiently. Um, that's just my opinion. They are, uh, that's, oh, it's it's, know, that's a, it's right. a very yeah. open debate well, on I mean, that one. There's a reason why they don't use things like that in such things like rally cars, I'd, I'd, I'd say, like V8 yeah. supercars, NAS cars. I'd say basically, um, yeah, there's the one. Cars. If, if, if you're some sort of um, aerodynamic researcher and have access to a wind tunnel, yeah, feel it. free to mock up a GQ Patrol um, brick <laughs> or just get a brick and stick an intake to it. Yeah, okay. Hole. And um, tell us what works better. And then we'll do it. <laughs> Big backwards facing cow on the patrol. Alright, so we got the new fuel filter here. Housing's still in the vise. Um, yeah, gonna go ahead, chuck the new filter on. Um, key to these, 
put a bit of uh, engine oil or gear oil just on the o-ring here same goes for the o-ring on the bottom when you put the um, water indicator on there all that does is helps the o-ring actually um, torque up because otherwise you'll get you'll get to a point where the friction of the rubber will stop it turning before it's actually tightened um, in the same way that when we went to undo that it seemed ridiculously tight uh, what's happened there is the fact that they're submerged in oil for a long time, well, they're diesel oil their entire life, they swell, the rubber swells, and that's what makes them so tight. So um, when I said whoever put this bloody filter on, that would be me. Um, it was not that tight when I put it on, but yeah, after a period of time, they do become increasingly hard to get off. So a little bit of oil on the surface there helps them do up. Um, if you read the box your filter comes in, it will probably actually tell you to do that somewhere. Usually, maybe not. Or on the filter. There you go. Apply thin film of oil or grease. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's just to help them talking up to the filter housing. So we're going to do that up. Try and get a bit of a grip on it. You do not need, well, um, depending on what you do for a living, you do not need filter pliers to do up a fuel or oil filter. That right there is plenty tight enough. I'm certainly not gonna rattle undone or leak and you do wanna make it possible to undo it again for the next guy. Cool, so next part to this, we're gonna throw in the water and fuel indicator in the bottom. The dish comes with an O-ring taped to the bottom of the filter. Same thing, bit of oil on the O-ring. And then all we're going to do is take our indicator over here, take the old O-ring off it. If when you buy a fuel filter, they should always come with an O-ring for this. Put that in there, back on. Make sure it's not on the thread, it's seated at the base where it should live. Back in. Thread that back up. <clears throat> and nip that back up. Now I find really be gentle on these. You only got to do up the O-ring. Do not crush it. They are only plastic, very weak. You probably asked why I'm using multi-grips on it. Um, you can use a spanner on them. They are a hex drive, but they, they're plastic. They're very likely to slip. They always want to roll off. And then all you end up with is they either crack or they round off, so I find that if you just gentle on multi-grips, don't crush it, but just gently nip it up, you won't have any issues. They seem to work a lot easier just because they actually grip into it rather than roll off it like a spanner or a socket would on plastic. That's just me, but whatever works best for you guys. Uh, yeah, that's all sorted, so we'll throw it back on the car. All right, so before we put the fuel filter housing back in, we're gonna go ahead and change over the oil filters. Just gives you a bit more room to work with. One down, one to go. And that's the filters out. All right, so that's both the old filters taken out and uh, they're draining. We're gonna go ahead and chuck a couple of new filters on there. All right, two new filters done. All right, that's the oil filters done. So now we're gonna go ahead, put the fuel filter housing back in. Nip those back up. The connector and the fuel lines to reconnect. Now if you ever do get uh, these lines mixed up as to which went where, if you look on the housing there is an arrow for the outlet. So yeah, obviously the outlet goes to the fuel pump. Plug that back on there. And the pickup back to the pickup from the tank. Grab the hose clamps. Okay, that's that. Alright, so yeah, plug in the uh, water and fuel indicator, last step. Um, now, if you're watching this and thinking he didn't fill up the uh, fuel filter, no I didn't because this has an electron electric primer pump down the side here, so no need to. If yours is a stock GQ, then yeah, before you put the filter on the housing, fill it up with fuel, you'll save yourself a lot of time on the hand primer. 
Um, yeah, do this doesn't have that issue. James <laughs> hits his ignition and, and they go duck, 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 and fill, fill itself up. straight back up. That's another question we had in the comments, actually. Yeah. What, what is that? What is that? Duck, duck, ticker noise. So that's what that is. Yeah. It's um, actually to keep the fuel up to the pump because when I first bought the car, it was having a bit of um, like I don't know, it was having like power issues in the top end. Like it would kind of go whoa, whoa, like it was running out of fuel, and I put that on there and didn't do it anymore. So. Well, basically, <coughs> you've wound the factory fuel pump up that far that the lift pump can't keep up with yeah, the supply to it, so yeah. it was starting to cavitate. So he's um, put an inline pump on. That's right. Little duck duck. Low, no pressure. Low pressure pump. Yeah, they only run like three pound. Yeah, not even. It's just like what you'd run a supply to a carby with. Yeah. yeah. That's actually what they're for, actually. That's yeah. why they were made. Okay, we got the engine oil draining from the patrol. While that's draining, we're going to have ourselves a hydration session and uh, read through a few of you guys' comments. We had nothing better to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to start from the top. Uh, today we're looking at the comments on the uh, turbo install video, part three, where James has done a burnout. Yeah, someone says his mate's GQ runs 45 pound. Anything on that, James? <clears throat> it won't last much longer. Phil says, that's not a burnout. Very disappointing, considering all the blood, sweat and tears gone into it. Yeah. I don't recall the tears part. <laughs> I thought we got that out of the video. <laughs> and we didn't build the car to do a burnout. Let's be fair. Let's clarify that the car that was, was built that to was, need uh, to be fixed. Yeah, you did that. You did that just on chance while the camera was rolling. That was just <laughs> happened to be there. Zach says that better not be an original factory blacktop. And Zach, yes, it is. It's uh, it's love and life. It loves it. Yep. Can't have enough. JB Riz says, uh, is this a post late 95 blacktop? If so, not going to last long, running 20 plus pound. What do you got on that, James? Well, I mean, it's not running 40, so it's long, long and lasted than old mates. In the it's, it's, a, it's on 20, not 20 plus. Not since the wastegate disconnect. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> 20 that, pound. Now we're on 23, and who knows? It might blow up tomorrow. James is walking on the uh, fine line with this thing. Yeah. It's, it's, like, it's been good so far, though, so by the end, Dan's just like, I'm putting in all this work and he's going to disconnect the wastegate. Ma swamp. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Notice how, for this video, we're in James's shed. <laughs> Paul says, next video, TD42 rebuild part one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next video will be install VT6 Cummins. Or 6 VT Cummins. 6 VT Cummins. Say it again. Say it. 6 VT Cummins. There we go. Uh, someone says, you don't need the gas shroud if you're welding gasless. That is a good tip and I appreciate that, but I'm welding with gas, so thank you for that tip. <laughs> but, um, I do need the gas shroud because I'm welding with gas. Uh, <laughs> someone having a go about the uh, exhaust sealant on the what, manifold. What did they say? They didn't like it. Uh, someone asked about what we used. Patrick replied with what it was. He got told it was a complete waste of time. <laughs> not needed on the exhaust manifold at all, <laughs> not to mention how much was used. Now, I will say on the how much was used, I don't use that much sealant. It looks like a lot more in the videos. It was the same on the diff gaskets and everything. For some reason on the camera, it comes up like there's half an inch of the shit on there. <laughs> the reason I put it on it exhaust might, manifold gaskets and that is, especially with this. Yes, that was a brand new manifold. And uh, yes... The flange it's bolting up to on that on that motor has done 480,000 k's. So, how straight and how perfectly level those uh, exhaust manifold not, flanges not to mention are it blew like is every, questionable. It blew like every gasket on the old manifold. Hmm. So, so, whether the sealer is entirely necessary is questionable. I find it's cheap insurance. Put a little bit on there, it certainly doesn't hurt, and uh, yeah, it hasn't leaked. So, is there any angry Toyota comments in there? Bang no. us out. Nothing negative for us to laugh about. Someone with a very accurate comment of should have done a 12 mil UFI crank snapper. That's right. Take it out of the shed and it blows up immediately. Oh no, you get a, you get a bit out of it. Then It'll you let go, you down you right when the tow fees are the most expensive. That's it. Mm -hmm. I read a thing a while ago that in the 90s, Nissan spent 25% more than every other manufacturer on parts for their for their manufacturing. Mm -hmm. And then in the 2000s. They like scunged out and they got a new CEO and they just spent fuck all on parts and they had like plastic guides for timing chains and shit which like fell apart after 6,000 Ks. Yeah, that's uh, companies getting uh, chasing the money rather than the reliability yep. as a lot of them have done now. I mm -hmm. think between Nissan, Toyota, Holden, Ford, they all pretty much did the same thing. 
It's really hard to tell with a new car as well if it's going to fall apart after 6,000 k's. Basically a lot of questions on the uh, fuel pump being non-boost compensated. Yep. Which it no isn't. boost compensated on the pump. It's just factory pump, 10 mil, has never been modified. Literally all we did was bolt a turbo to the side of the, to the engine and ran it straight into the intake manifold and that was all we did. When James bought the car, it uh, didn't have an intercooler on it whatsoever. It was literally running the old turbo that you saw us take off in part one. It was running that straight into the intake. Yeah, ran it about 450 degrees on a good day on the <laughs> exhaust side. So it was a piston melter. She was running very hot for a long time, this motor. Now, I think if you're going to say something about this motor and how it hasn't died yet, that would definitely say something. The fact yeah. that it was running a old it, school turbo with the gate pounds, disconnected. With no <laughs> intercooler. With no intercooler whatsoever and a tiny exhaust. And it, yeah, it was like a, mm. it was like a one and a half inch exhaust through two mufflers. Factory exhaust pretty much. Yep. And uh, yeah. It was not uh, very What, what were you pushing EGTs going? Uphill, uh, uphill it was probably about 500, 550. Towing something, you'd be about 500. <clears throat> uh, going down a hill, you get about 300. Um, and if you were like revving the fuck out of it, get trying to cool it down, it would sit about 450. So it was uh, not ideal. Now though, it sits at around 250. Doesn't change. So, so yeah, you'd say with the new turbo. So after you put the intercooler on, you were pushing what? You'd still push about, 400. About it was about 300, 350 yeah. with the new yeah. with the intercooler. And that was like that was like the it's, it's the highest you ever got. And now it's now it's about 200 to like 300. It doesn't like yeah. and going up to like the snow and stuff and you're rolling down the hill, it literally goes to zero. Yeah. Like you have it's no um, exhaust temperature. Yeah, it drops right down, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Basically, it is imperfect, but it works. Yeah. It's the fuel ratio is going to be all over the place because there's no boost compensation. Super rich, down low, comes on boost, runs super probably, lean. Runs super <laughs> lean. So it's uh, it's got the best of both worlds. It's it's imperfect, but it works. The thing doesn't run hot. Um, it doesn't run hot. I'm sure you could get a lot more power out of it with more fuel. Yeah. But um, you could probably get more power out of it with like the same amount of fuel and tuning the boost to the yeah, fuel. Exactly, but you get more power out of it. But again. No one's got time works. to go to a dyno and get a tune and then the guy's going to complain about his car, his, how his whole shed's full of soot and then he's going to try and sue you for giving him cancer, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. nah. You can't say that, James. <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, quality. Hoon tuned. Cowboy tune. Cowboy tune. Yeah, 600 great. horse cowboy tune TD42. <laughs> We oh, have, nice James got the whole uh, whole tuning kit for this car. He's got a flat screwdriver. And a hammer to knock the kit. timing forward. Yeah. Just the ballpoint hammer. Got the lot. Tuned. That's enough gas bag, let's get back to work. <laughs> so I was thinking, with, when you're putting your oil into your car, how does the oil get from the top of the rocker cover here, how does it get all the way down past the pistons into the sump? Yeah, so basically, as you're pouring it into the rocker cover, it's running all over through the rockers like it normally would when yeah. the motor's running. Yeah. Then it just runs back through the oil galleries, back down into the sump like it would when the motor's running. Okay. So obviously there's a lot more in the rocker cover when you're pouring it in. But when the motor's normally running, you've got oil pressure up. It'll run through all your oil journals, up through your lifters, up your push rods. Then this is a push rod motor. Yeah. Up through your push rods, down over all the rocker gear, lubricate the whole top end, and then it'll all just gravity feed back to the sump. All right, so now we're ready to refill the engine with oil. We're using Nulon Semi-Synthetic 15W40. All right, so we put 10 litres of the 15W40 in, and uh, it's saying it's just about on the full mark, so we're gonna go ahead, start the car, and should take maybe another half, maybe another litre, once it fills the filters, so yeah. Get some pressure in the system. Oh. Righto. So we'll let that drain back down to the pan and then we'll uh, give it a quick recheck and then we're going to move on to coolant. All right, so now that we've run it and that's uh, filled the filters up, let it drain back down and checked it again. Um, probably need about another litre. So yeah, gonna go ahead and chuck a bit more in. 
be tough, I reckon. Yep. So now that we've uh, sorted the uh, engine oil, we're just about to drop the coolant. There is a block drain at the rear, sort of just behind, um, well it's got a turbo on it, but just behind your exhaust dump. Rear of the block, probably about halfway down, it's a 12 mil drive. Um, yeah, so we're going to drain it from there and then uh, we'll look at topping it back up again. Just in a critical spot, someone put a turbo in the way. Okay, confirming that's cool. Yeah, not all of it. Yeah, success. And it's draining out. Yeah, there you out. go. All right, so we dropped all our coolant into the drain tray, and uh, now we're ready to just do that bung back up, and uh, we'll head back up, fill it back up again. All right, so as you can see, we moved the troll outside. We uh, dropped the coolant, flushed it out with the hose, and um, we're about to uh, top her back up with uh, some new on heavy duty diesel coolant. Uh, which you can see is rated to 128 degrees, which uh, I'm sure some of you will agree is very important for when you're running a uh, TD42 or kettle, as they're formerly known. Um, yeah, should be uh, should be good for it. You mix this 50-50 water and concentrate. So I'm just going to chuck one in. We'll put five liters of water in and go from there. You're doing it from that way. Yeah, you pour off the back, and you get more angle, more angle of the dangle. As the pour. Bad. Oh, he's pretty, he's like he's done it before. It's goddamn perfect. Once or twice. You spill it enough, eventually you get it right. <laughs> okay, so to measure the coolant 50-50, probably the easiest way, um, I just dump five litres of coolant in there, fill the bottle back up with water, and tip five litres of water in. Real simple. Completely missed. Oh, oh it's more, it's, it's fuller. It's, it's brimmed. Oh, it's brimmed. You brimmed it. That was to rinse off the yeah, splash like of coolant. Yeah. Sounded like it was getting full. We've just got nearly all the coolant in there, and James is going to start the car, get it circulating, run the heater, get all the air bubbles out of the system. James. Hear <laughs> that? Troll owner. Can you tell? Alright, so that's uh, most of the service work done. We're just going to chuck uh, this uh, diesel fuel system cleaner in James's tank. He's got about 100 litres in the patrol right now. Um, which is what that treats. So uh, yeah, it's meant to clean your injectors and fuel system. So should be good. And that's that in. For a car this age, um, the injectors in it, I imagine wouldn't be in perfect condition. Uh, never done anything with them since James has had it. So can't imagine it hurt to run a bit of that through it uh, occasionally. Yeah, whether your car's doing a lot of Ks or whether it's something a bit dated like this, yeah, clean out fuel system and yeah. Thanks for watching our three part series on servicing a 1998 GQ in this patrol. If you guys like the videos, feel free to like, subscribe, and if you've got any questions about what we did on the patrol today, feel free to comment down below. If you only hate comments, comment them below too. We love reading them, they're quite funny. <laughs> Especially all them uh, Land Cruise lovers. <laughs> <laughs> you just had to put the fire. Alright, cut! We can't let it out. Just some of the fluid from a Nissan patrol. Jesus. All in one.